Maple syrup from sap to syrup. Young girls in the Van Destiny happily run through the woods, checking buckets that are nailed to trees. They hope to find their buckets are full of a potion they, that they can cook down into a golden brew. Now, if the weather is perfect, they will bring in a good haul of potion, but if the weather is bad, the pickings will be slim. Neve and Destiny hope for warm days and freezing nights. This is the story of turning sap into maple syrup. Today, I will be talking about the phenomenon that happens when a tree releases its sap, how the sap gets sweet, and all the hard work and patience it takes to turn the sap into maple syrup. According to the Indiana DNR, maple trees go through a process throughout the year that enables them pr to produce nutrients for growth, store the nutrients for sustainability, and then release them into a liquid form known as sap. In their book titled The Maple Syrup Book, authors Eagleson and Hosner explain that the first part of the process for the maple tree is to produce starchy nutrients for its growth. Cells of the maple tree produce a nutrient-rich water between the months of May and September. This nutrient-rich water-based concoction is known as the tree's sap. According to Eagleson and Hosner, the second step in the process involves the tree storing its nutrients to sustain itself during the winter months. In order for maple trees to produce sap viable for making syrup, the trees must be in a state that experiences cold winter months. Only the northern United States and Canada have the perfect temperatures for, ma for maple trees to produce the right sap for making syrup. The Indiana Department of Natural Resources tells us that the last step in the process involves the maple tree releasing its sap. Maple trees release their sap when temperatures fluctuate above freezing by day and below freezing by night. This usually occurs during the months of February and March. During this time, maple enthusiasts put tappers into the maple trees, hang buckets under them, and wait for the sap to fill their buckets. The Indiana DNR website explains that in order to get a sweet sap, the starchy, nutri starchy nutrients of the tree must break down into glucose. When temperatures are below freezing at night and around 40 degrees during the day, an enzyme in the maple tree breaks down the tree's starch into sugar that passes into the sap. According to an article on the Naked Scientist website, human saliva also has an enzyme called amylase that breaks down starch into sugar. Amylase breaks down starches into simpler sugars to help the human, human body digest food, just as maple trees require enzymes to aid in releasing of the nutrients that they retain. A fun way that you can experience this for yourself is to take half a slice of bread and chew and chew and chew it. You will notice how the taste of the bread changes as it gets sweeter and sweeter. This is the amylase enzyme in your saliva break down the starch and turning it into glucose. In the same way, the enzyme in maple trees turn the starch to sugar and make for a sweet sap that we and then turn into delicious syrup. The next step in the process is for the sap from the tree to get converted into syrup. Buckets of sap are gathered from the tree. Sap is collected from the buckets under the trees and transferred into large containers to be taken to a sugar shack. A sugar shack is a structure used when cooking sap down into syrup. As explained in the maple in the book, Maple on Tap, Making Your Own Maple Syrup, the final step involves cooking the sap down into syrup. The sap gets cooked for many hours so that water can be evaporated from it. Once the majority of the water has been evaporated, what remains is a thick, sweet syrup. It takes 40 gallons of sap to yield one gallon of maple syrup. To give you a better picture of this, if you boil down a 20 ounce pot bottle of maple sap, you would end up with only one tablespoon of maple syrup. Sap must be continuously monitored when it is cooking. If it gets cooked down too much, it will burn. And if it burns, the whole batch is ruined and there is no way of reversing it. In conclusion, maple trees need perfect temperatures to produce and raise their sap. A perfect science of enzymes at work, breaking down starch into sugar, is part of the process, just like in the human body. A lot of work and patience goes into the two month sap producing period. Maple syrup enthusiasts work daily checking for sap and cooking it down into syrup. Monitoring the, pro the cooking process is an important part of the syrup making. And if the entire process is done correctly, the yield is a sweet liquid gold to be enjoyed by all. Thank you.